Welcome to SolidCam Professor. I'm Sydney, your SolidCam Professor, with one of many videos available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In this recording, we'll be continuing with thread milling and we'll show you our levels and our technology. After I've chosen my tool, we'll go to our levels. Our levels is very straightforward. We have our upper level and our thread depth. My upper level in this particular case is the top over here. And my thread depth is at the bottom. Note, however, there are two ways of giving our thread depth. We can either give it by a value or if necessary, we can give it by the number of threads that we want inside the hole itself. There are times where you get a blueprint where it actually tells you you want to have a specific amount of threads inside the hole. So then you can use the option of number of threads. In this particular case, however, I would like to use the option of value. The value will be chosen from the bottom of the part. So I just click on the bottom of the part and we have our value. Now, if we want, we can add an extra depth in delta. Since this is a through hole, I don't mind going a little past the bottom of the hole. So I'll give a delta value of minus 2.5 millimeters. We have an option also called additional depth. This is not always used. However, this is used if, for example, you have already done this operation, but when you come back and check the part and you need an additional depth on it, you can say, I'd like to have an additional depth of say another three millimeters. And you can start from the actual start of the thread or just those additional threads if you have already done that thread already. I don't need this for now, so I'm just gonna leave it at zero. Now let's go into our technology. In our technology, many aspects are very similar to our profile operation, such as we have compensation, we have rough and finish with wall offsets as well, and also clear offset. The rest, however, is specifically designed for thread milling. For thread milling, we have the option of working internal, and this is what we're doing in this particular case over here. And we also have the option of external, working on the outside. Note, when I click on each one of these, we have a diagram on the outside, on the right-hand corner, showing you exactly what we're talking about. So we're talking about, in this particular case, internal. Now, our major thread diameter is automatically populated because we used a table defined tool and it gets the information from that table. So this value is put in here automatically. If there's a slight deviation for tolerances, for example, you can put a different value in here as well. Next, we have our direction, right-handed or left-handed. I'm going to be working in right-handed, as in most of our cases are also right-handed, you'll note that our default is already set at right-hand. Next, we have our cutting from, the actual direction. Are we starting from the bottom, or are we starting from the top going to the bottom? If I'm going from bottom to the top, you'll note it's through the diagram that's starting at the bottom and that we're also working climb milling. If I go to top to bottom, you'll note we're starting at the top, but in this particular case, it's working conventional milling. If I were to change this to external, for example, you'll note then that working from top to bottom over here is climb milling. We'll use internal in this particular case. Also note that if I were to use left-handed, working from top to bottom is also climb milling. So I'll go to right-handed, and since I do like to work in climb milling, I'll keep it at bottom to top. I'm also gonna click on compensation. Next, we have our 
rough cuts, and we have our finish. Let's first start off without a rough, going directly into our finish. Finish, we have number of passes, just like we have in the finish of any profile operation. Next, we have another option here called start angle. There are times when you have a specific start angle on the thread itself, which is mentioned in the blueprint of that particular hole. If this is an important aspect in the particular case, you can tell it exactly what angle you would like to have the start of the thread itself. In this particular case, I'll just leave it at zero. Now, one more aspect of the operation itself is also our link. We'll get back to the rest of these in a few moments, but let's go into our link now. In our link, we have the following. We have start from the center, where it actually goes down to the center and it'll start moving from the center, and we have a flat approach. Now, if this is a through hole, we do not need a flat approach. A, a non-flat approach is that as it actually starts arcing its way into the thread itself, it already starts the upward motion. If I'm starting at the very bottom of a flat hole, then I can use what we call a flat approach. As it goes into the material at the very beginning, it gives a flat approach into the thread. I'm just going to leave it right now without the flat approach and we'll do save and calculate and run our simulation. In our simulation, we'll take a look at our Z levels as well as the actual movements of the tool itself. We'll do this one step at a time. And as you see, the tool now will go all the way to the bottom and you can see it's actually past the part. Now, our part is 60 millimeters. You'll note it went to the depth of 62.5, which was set in our Delta Z as well. Now let's do this one step at a time. You see the tool, and we'll actually do this from the top view now, and we'll get rid of the tool so we can actually see the tool pass. You can see it first went to the side from the center, and you can see we're still at 62.5, we did not actually start going into the material itself. It continued now in because over here it first did its compensation and now it's actually going towards the part but still is at 62.5 because it did not actually enter the material. Now it started arcing into the material. You'll note that it actually started lifting off the bottom going up. If we take a look from the side view, you can actually see that lift as it's going up into the part itself. Now let's continue with our motions. You can see now it's actually doing that helical move where it actually does a circle and moves up at the same time until it gets to the very top. One continuous motion all the way till the top. Now, I'd like to go back to the tool for a moment and make a slight change. I'd like to change the number of teeth from two to a total of five teeth. In other words, when it has its thread cutting length, it can actually cut in one sweep 17.5 millimeters. We'll select the tool, save and calculate, now let's take a look at our simulation. The beginning starts off exactly the way it did in our previous operation, going down all the way to the bottom and doing that first helical loop as shown over here. However, now look what happens. Since this tool is able to cover a total of 17.5 millimeters, we don't have to do in an, a continuous helical all the way up to the top. So look what happens now. My next step, it'll actually go back to the center, 
go up and now it's at 45 millimeters. It'll go in now and then it covers another 17 and a half millimeters and then again jump up this time to 27.5 millimeters. And this way, by using a tool like this, you can actually do it quicker because it automatically knows, according to the amount of teeth that it has, exactly where it can jump up to in order to continue exactly where the previous depth left off. For more videos on SolidCam Professor, please go to our website, www.solidcam.com, and look for the tab called SolidCam Professor. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.